say one more thing here. I'll highlight one more thing here and it will come out as, as a very interesting tool here. See where we're having now here. Maybe we want to do another, another zone at 5V out because it's something that we'll be using more, more current and we want to have maybe a zone, not just a trace here. Let me show you what we're going to do. We are going to draw a zone, say in between here, just in here. And we are going to, to make that zone also in our power plane because we said, let's use our, our that layer as the power plane and still this is a power signal. So let's do one here. So I'm going to take our tool here. That's the, the highlight net tool. Just hit here. Of course, take our net tool here, add field zones. So I'm going to do a very, a very thick zone here. So I can just do it this way and hit this way. And of course it selects for us and say, okay, then I can take it all the way here or maybe somewhere, maybe I can hit it all the way say up to here. So you, you are at liberty to do the sizes here. You, you, you don't have to, you are not restricted in terms of sizing. Then I can do this way. I'll go here, left click, left click and I can left click also if, if I'm very accurate there, I'll just say close zone. So then what I'm going to do is to hit B. Once I hit B now, if I now say show zones, then I'll see what happens. So you see what's happening here? You realize that it's kind of like everything here is connected. And this is very bad for your design because what it says here is that the internal layers are, the internal layers are shorted. And let's see what the DRC tells us. So let's say inspect, design will check, and say run DRC. And also, you see we have this, this error that says copper area inside copper area. Because that's a huge problem. And now this is now, this will take us to another level that we called zone priorities. Remember that that was, was like an intermediate, intermediate fundamental context that, context that I said we'll be covering here. So what you're going to do is, you're going to double click this one here. And you see here, we have, we have something that's called zone priority here. By default, this value is zero. So for any other zone that we've been drawing, even on previous boards, and even on your boards that you have done them, say you've been doing boards, and you have never interacted with this zone priority level, it's always zero. So what we are going to do, we are going to change this to one because we don't have any other, any other with one as a priority level. And what Kika does, any, any zone that does not have a one, it's going to create itself, it's going to create some clearance within that area and of course avoid such shorting. So let me hit okay now, I've done this as one, I'll hit okay. Then I'll hit B on my, on my keyboard again to refill copper zones and then I'll say show. So you see what happens here, that that particular zone now has isolated itself from the other zones here because we only need it connected on this particular layer. And so we have a zone that's filled for that particular signal itself. So let's run DRC once again. So once we run DRC, we have that now going. And of course we just have one, one, one problem here about some layers overlapping and stuff, although that's a courtyard issue, but that's, that's a easy fix. So what you can do if you have that as issues always, you can do this, you can move this a little bit there, or maybe you can send this to bottom layer, just hit F on your keyboard to flip it. And of course, if I, if I now run design rules check here again, and of course I should be having zero everywhere. Oh yeah, I'll hide the CMTS and of course the back fab here. So again, we can delete this. We are going to delete this track. Just hit, just select one side, hit I and delete. Then what you're going to do is just a small, a small trace here and hit V on your keyboard. And of course, then hit B to the And of course, we having everything now is connected. So if we can view this layer, we have everything now that's connected and we are working with the zones here. So, and of course it's not restricted say to internal layers. If you want, if you also want to do zones for top layers that of course have high sig, high say we have high current demands, say like around this place where we'll be having say like these are, these are fuses and stuff. You can also do zones on top layer and of course avoid using traces. So we'll always use zones say 
where we have like high demand in terms of current and stuff. And of course we want to cater for that by having very huge traces and stuff like that. So I hope that concept was brought out like even in, in a very clear manner. And of course the issues to do with zone priority and stuff like those have been spelled out very well. So in the previous class, I did highlight about through vias, blind vias, buried vias and stuff, and vias and pads. So I want to do a small demonstration of, of this in, in KiCad and of course also dealing with it in say multi-layers and stuff like that. So I'll open up a, a board that was previously done so that at least I can make this concept much clear. And of course, I'll look for a board that has a BGA design so that at least this is much clear here. I think we can do, let's do like, yeah, we can do like this one here. I think it has some PG and stuff. So I'll just fire up the, the PCB view. Well, it's, it's a complex board here. Well, it's also a four layer board. So it has some very, very intricate design here. So, when we talk about via in a pad, it means that you are drawing a via on top of a pad. And you see, this is, this is what we are having here. Like these are, these are vias on top of, this is a BGA package and it has vias that are placed on this pad. And it's usually very easy to do this. So when you want to do a via in a pad, also very easy, it's not a complex thing. It's just a fancy way of saying how we do things here. Just just do the route as usual and then hit V. Let me like delete one here so that I can redo that. So what you usually do is just select as usual and then hit V. And of course you have to go with a smaller, a smaller V size here like this one. So I'll hit this and of course hit V and then just place it there. So this is something to do with V in part. And of course the V the V should be small. So that of, of course it connects well with the with the pad. Like here you can see the type of the size of the via we are going with for this particular case. We are going with 0 0.04, of course. So this one here. So just hit select here and hit V and place it somewhere in the middle there. So it's also very good and used, say when you are connecting like this particular pad to internal layers, like you can see this layer here. If I do this here, it's now used to connect. 3v3 like the same signal here so you just have to have a via drop a via there and you have connected that pad so usually very easy to do that in a four layer stack up you just drop a via and and it's done it's a it's a done deal say for that particular connection <coughs> so i'll highlight a question <coughs> that zaverio did ask in terms of placing components like, is there a specific way to place some footprints on your keycard and stuff like that? So you can realize, like, if you're dealing with decoupling capacitors and stuff like those, we, we say that these ones, they need to be very close to your PC, to your IC. Like you can see in this particular BGA here, we have some decoupling capacitors that are very close here. And of course, for you to see that, let me do, let me do a 3D V so that at least you can see what I'm saying that they have to be very close and I can demonstrate this through the 3D view here. You can see here, like we have these, these are decoupling capacitors. And of course they have to be very close to what they are decoupling, yeah? So these ones, they are very close to this, to this I see here. And of course, I think, remember we do have some at the bottom, of course, so that they are very close to, to the pins that they decouple. That's one thing that you have to note. Please, when you are doing decoupling capacitors, always make sure they are very close to the pin they are decoupling. So that, that's a tip on that and of course again while we act vias always do a short a short short dig trace to ground and of course short dig short dig trace again to power like we are doing it here and of course same for these other capacitors here like you can see this cap here and of course it's very much close to this particular signal here and again it's connected through a via and of course we have a via in pad here so it's just a fancy name of saying via in pad. You just put a via in pad as usual. So, so again, for this for this particular lecture, I wanted to show you how like you can do 
four layers and where you can opt to go for four layers. And, and of course, I think you have known how to do four layers first to set that tap in kicker again, doing zones and working with zone priorities. Of course, it's, it's, it's a little bit advanced concept. I hope it didn't come like a shock, say there, especially now when you're doing with stuff like those. But again, it, it will be more and more practice again, and you learn how to put these things, of course, into perspective. And again, I've touched a bit on some tools, say to deal with, with, with the PCD layout. And of course, we'll be touching more tools as we go on, say like every other tool here and what it does. So let me see. But of course, we, we, we did talk about blind vias. And again, you can see them for, like for this, for this case here. We do have vias that are, that are running now from the top layer to the second layer here. So what I'll do, let me, let me just put off the, that for the layer and of course the bottom layer. So that you can see, we have this one, this is the top one here. We do a via in pad here. And again, this is a blind via. So that now it comes from first layer, of course, goes all the way to the second layer. And again, we have, we have that running outside here using now this particular layer here. So of course, you, I hope you remember how we do this because you will you'll have again, again, to see, you see it starts from the top layer, goes all the way to in, in one, this is layer two. And again, we do a trace now from this particular layer, going all the way to where it's supposed to be connected. So nothing, nothing fancy there again to do with these layers. So, so for this, for this, for this, for this concepts, and, and again dealing with multi-layer stackups, I don't want to pump in more, more, more details or more theory. So we'll be getting more on to how, again, we'll be starting a design. Say we, we, we are stuck at a certain point and maybe we want to proceed to that design and push it say to four layers, six layers and stuff like those. So I have a question here coming from, from Peter saying that, is there different material separating the layers? The material separating the layers is one type always. As you can see here, we have, and of course, it's all, it will always even come again in same thickness because it's very symmetrical. So we have like they are calling they usually call it the prepreg. It's a different type of material, like maybe like say it's glass material, like the one we talked about, the FR4. So it could be that type of material depending on the fab house that you are using and depending on what they use for that particular case. So in most cases, it will be an FR4 material that's doing the separation. So for this particular lecture, again, in terms of stack up, I'm, I'm very sure now that you know how to do such setups. And again, and of course you have learned two or three things to do with the theoretical ways and of course some few tools to use. So now unless like anyone now has a question regarding this particular session, we should be ready to proceed to the next session. For